Okay, so here's one of the reasons for changing the fan motors. I'm getting the power supply fan that's on the bottom of this. It's actually in the power supply itself, which is bolted by these four screws. You can hear that fan. Now watch. So you can see I can get it to quiet down sometime. Oh, not, not so much. So that's one of the reasons. So if I was going to do that fan, I figured I might as well do all of them. Also, this one here, while not making that grinding noise there, it is making a bit of a tick. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. And, yeah, I see that. Hey, and there's nothing stuck in there. It's just the uh, blade moving in and out on the little shaft in there. So, those are my reasons for changing at least that fan and that fan. So I figured if I'm going to do it, I might as well spend the extra 15 bucks and do all of them. Okay, so hopefully you get an idea what those fan motors sound like. And the biggest offender is this guy right here, which is on the power supply itself. So this is the control box with the bottom taken off. And this is just an off-the-shelf power supply, actually. If this ever dies, I think this is like 45 bucks. But it's held in with four screws on the side here. So we can go ahead and just remove these. slide this out. So this is the power supply here. I'm just going to turn that to the back for a second. And what we have is one fan right here in the middle, a little circulator fan, and another exhaust fan out in the back. So, all right, let's do this little circulator fan first. So there's just two screws here that hold that on. Let me get down in here. Okay. There's the fan and it has a connector right to this main board here. And there you go. So I'm gonna get the one that we're gonna replace this with. Let me go grab the box. Okay, so I just have this, which is a noise blocker brand 50 by 50 by 10 millimeter fan. And I'm just gonna mount that to the same bracket there. So give me two seconds. Let me mount this to the bracket in the same orientation, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so now the new fan motor is mounted, and the connector on this is a 3-pin connector. So you have a choice. You can either use a 2-pin to 3-pin connector, or you can just modify this and stake on the 2-pin connector. And that's what we're going to do. So what we're going to do here is... I'm just going to cut this off and we're going to pull back the sheet a little bit. Okay, we're going to ignore the white wire because that is a signal wire for fan speed. We don't have that. We're not using that. And we're just going to use these little connectors. So what you do is just put the red wire in there, put the red wire in here, push them in as far as they'll go, take a pair of pliers and squeeze and that's it that is now broken 100 percent off what you do is just put them in there all the way all the way in as far as they'll go and take a pair of pliers and then just squish and that'll puncture the wire and you're connected so now i can plug this 
back into where it came from and remount the fan. I'll just have to tie this wire up. Very simple. So let me get this back into place. Okay, so now we're going to get this vent fan, which you may or not, may not be able to see. It's behind this red wire here. It's all the way in the back there. There's four screws on that. We're going to take that off, so I'm just going to unscrew it off camera for you. Okay, so the fan we're going to be placing back there is this Noctua 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter by 20 millimeter fan. If you look at the grate, there's really not much airflow through that. So what other people have done and uh, has made basically this, which is a little duct. And what I'm going to do right now is I am going to snip out that fan shroud there, the fan protector. I'm going to snip that out, file off the edges, and we're going to install this little duct in it. Also. You might not be able to tell, but there are little standoffs there, so there is a gap of about an eighth of an inch between the fan and that shroud anyway, so a lot of the air doesn't even make it out that vent. So we're going to remedy that. So let me go ahead and snip that off and smooth it out uh, off camera. Okay, you can see that little duct is in place there. And it's right there. Now I'm just going to mount the fan and do the same thing with the wiring. Okay, so I have everything in place and there's the fan there. I just deleted this little shroud that was on it there because um, it's inside the box and there is already a shroud on the outside there. So what I'm going to do right now is make sure nothing's touching and looks nasty. And I'm just going to turn this on real quick and make sure all the fans spin. Okay, so I'm going to plug, plug her in. All right, now, now that other fan that you hear is the hot end fan. This fan is temperature controlled. Both other fans here are running. Now this fan here doesn't run until you turn the heated bed on, until this power supply heats up. So, okay, just heated up the bed, and uh, we got this one running too. So all of our fans are running. This is really quiet. That hot end is the only one that you're hearing now, and uh, we'll be working on that next. Okay, so now for our final fan, we'll be replacing the hot end cooling fan. Now, one of the reasons behind this is this is making a lot of noise. Um, not necessarily just air movement noise, but it's also making um, like a ticking sound, like something's hitting the fan, but it's not. Uh, let me see if I can kind of demonstrate that for you real quick. I don't know how well this is going to come on camera. There you go. There it is. So we're going to remove that fan and replace it with this one here. But in the process, what we're also going to do is we're going to change up the mount and change up this part cooling fan. So what this blower does is there's a tiny little duct under here, like a little channel. And what that does is that forces air onto the part that it's extruding and cools off the plastic and allows it to solidify. And as you can see, it's only on the right-hand side here. The nozzle is right where my finger is. So it's not the best design, and one reason why you may want to upgrade this is by having a better cooling solution to cool that filament as it comes out, you are better able to uh, bridge gaps without support. And so what we have here is this is going to be the new duct. It's going to use the original blower here, which will mount right on top here, but as you can see, it has two ducts that will be able to go 
on either side of that nozzle and you'll also be able to see the nozzle a lot better which will make for some better video when we actually get to being able to print some things and recording it. So you need to print the two files I have below one of which is the actual fan mount for this cooling fan and the other one which is the duct and they slide really nice together like so and it also gives you some vertical adjustment. So what we're going to do right now is set up to do this using all of the screws, parts, and pieces that come with the instructions here. So what we're going to do is take some 3 millimeter nuts and slide them into these slots here to basically capture them. They should fit right into there. A little bit of pressure. And there are also two slots on the back here. Okay, so those nuts are in there and lined up with their respective holes. So now we need to take off the old mount here. I need to get my Allen's again. Okay, so you can see that's the little duct there. Now we can take off this front shield here. Okay, so I have the old cover off. I took the fan off and cut it. And I cut the little zip tie that's holding that little wire loom together. Those two wires are for the fan and here's that blower. So you can kind of see how this is made up here. Just grab something to point with. So what you have here is the hot end. So under here is the nozzle and right here is the heating block with the ceramic heater in it. This right here is a giant heat sink which that fan, this one here, blows on to cool it off. So this cools off the section where the filament comes through and then this right here is what actually heats the filament as it comes out. So all your melting happens right here. There are many little cooling blocks, hot ends that you can buy for this, all kinds of different things that may be an upgrade in the future. For right now, I'm fine with the stock one. It's printing PLA, no problem. If I was uh, gonna try to print ABS, I may need to upgrade this just because this might not have enough heat. I don't know if this will get hot enough, but you know, experimentation, we'll find out down the line. So this is our fan bracket here, and this groove, that's on the side here hooks in to the end of this bracket here so kind of just want to fit this in place I'm trying to keep my hands out of the shot as best I can okay I'm gonna have to readjust this gantry again because I'm accidentally pushing it down with my hand but so we want to get this secured on that side, those tabs locked in place, that's what's going to hold this right side in place and we're going to line up this hole right back here which you may or may not see on that camera and we're going to take our ok 
cap screw and we're gonna need to start that in place here and get this looped around where I want it there we go that's in place there and this intentionally has some play in it to be able to move it around this slot will move a little bit you can see here what I'm doing right now is just feeling under here and I'm evening out this bottom edge with the bottom edge of that metal bracket may need to be adjusted in the future I'm not sure but that's what we're gonna go with right now alright so that's in there and that's actually pretty secure okay that one in and now we're gonna run our next one in right through this hole here So we're going to attach our fan and we want the air blowing in. So I'm just figuring out right now how I want to mount these wires. I'm probably going to leave them a little bit long. Maybe I'll do something like that maybe. Just so I have a little bit of extra. Stay on the safe side, right? And then I can zip tie and zip tie that together. Okay, so let's mount it like that. And we're going to put it and we're just basically going to screw right into that plastic. So we're going to take our duct here and we're going to mount our blower to it. So here's the bottom of that. And what I'm going to do is slide it into these two slots. All the way in there, like so. two of the screws that we took out they're long enough to fit in there and we're gonna run those in I gotta get my hand over this so you're not gonna see much I'm just gonna run these two screws right into here and that'll clamp everything together okay so I have that blower mounted all right I connected the fan wires off camera I didn't use those little clip connectors I actually just got my soldering iron and soldered them together and uh, put a piece of heat shrink over both of them, sealed that, and then put another piece of heat shrink over both of those and sealed that so you can strap it up against. Just because there's going to be a lot of vibration here and those things are kind of bulky. I didn't want them getting in the way. So now what we need to do is just attach this duct, which just slides right into two little slots. And there are two screws where we put those captured nuts. And all we need to do is just snug those up. Now you can see I have adjustment and we're gonna adjust the height of this in a second. So let me get these snug down and do a little bit of cable management over here as best I can with some zip ties and then we'll get the height of this blower set. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn this unit on. 
Okay, I'm going to detach you for one second and just show you that that fan motor is on and blowing and it's pretty much silent. And it's moving a ton of air. I can stick my hand behind here and I can feel that blowing. So now Okay, so now we need to go into the control panel and auto home. I accidentally pushed down on this entire gantry. I don't know if I pressed fully down on it uh, perfectly. So what we're going to do is we're going to check and make sure that this side is the same distance away from the bottom as this side. And we're just right now moving our axes out of the way. Okay, so how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to take my pair of calipers and what we're going to do is we're just going to put it down here and we're going to measure right up to the bottom of that and then we're going to tighten it down. And we're going to see if we're the same over here. And we're actually pretty close. A little bit off. We're... Okay. 7 inches, 16 thousandths there. And over here... I'm sorry, 4 inches, 716 thousandths. And over here, we're four inches, seven hundred and ninety-five thousand. So what I can do is just grab the screw. On actually, I gotta go to the control panel and click prepare, disable steppers. And what I can do is just manually turn this until seven hundred. is 715 let's check over here now this is being a little lean over attentive I'll give you that but you know we have the technology to be able to do this we might as well do it just took another minute and went back and forth again and I have that at uh, they're 100% even with my calipers so right now we just want to go back to home alright so now what we're gonna do is Y out somewhere in the middle. Well, X somewhere out in the middle. And we're going to take one of the wrenches that came with this. I'm going to put that underneath here. And we're going to set the feet on that. And that'll set our initial clearance. Put the feet nice and flat on there. And then, all we need to do
okay. Make sure those feet are planted where we want it to be. And all we need to do is snug up these two screws here. And that will hold our duct in position. Okay, just going handheld here for a second. So we're definitely both running. You can see how close we are and how much quieter it is. And we're still moving a decent amount of air over both that heat sink in the back and also out through these. And you can see how much more visible that nozzle is now compared to trying to see it behind that little box. So you can see what that looks like all the way around now. So now as far as print quality wise, will this help me bridge gaps? I don't know, but I definitely like being able to see the nozzle. Uh, I, I also like being able to get there and clear the nozzle if it gets any strings on there. And I also like the quietness of it. Okay, all in all, not too bad on the fan motor front. Now, is this a necessary mod? No. I just did it to quiet the noise, and obviously I was having a fan motor that was dying in here, and then the one for the hot end was making a noise, too. Didn't want that to die. Uh, the one thing I'm not too keen on is this power supply is still a little noisy. You can still decently hear it. Let me put the camera on near it. Uh, it's definitely quieter. And I think part of the problem is that power supply fan is quiet on its own, but put into this enclosure, there's not a whole lot of room for it to breathe. This power supply doesn't actually touch this bottom panel, and the vents in the bottom panel aren't even al aligned to where that fan is. So what you're hearing is air noise. And I have two exhausts, so it's that exhaust down and out, and exhaust out the back, and then that little circulator fan. The only thing that we have actually intaking is these louvers here so what I might do uh, just to see if it'll work is flip that fan motor and that power supply as a supply and see if that quiets it down a little bit as long as I'm getting airflow in there I don't think that'll be an issue so all in all a pretty good mod now the only other thing we got to do is the Raspberry Pi controller and mount the webcam for this and then we're pretty much 100% automated